Hello, hello, my name is Tom, and welcome back to Ah Garage Time. I'm gonna be doing something pretty nerve-wracking for myself, and probably you. I'm gonna be painting more. I'm gonna be doing paint on the interior. That means having to cover up all this nice exterior paint so I don't get overspray on it. And I'm also going to be tackling those fuel tank modifications that I didn't get done last week. So please, check it out. Garage time. Thank you to all of you who voted for the fuel filler placement. Now, like I did last time when I created a poll or a question, the most popular answer is not always the one that is best, or at least not best for me. And this is no different. A few commenters said, why drill a new hole if you can just use the oval that is already there? And I think that is the least obtrusive thing. Rather than drilling another hole in this poor fuel tank, let's use the one that's already there and just dump fuel right on top of the fuel pump. The other problem I'm having in this garage space is I have parts everywhere. I mean, the door is laying inside. I have the hood here on the wall. The deck lid is in my closet in my house. The other door is sitting outside under a cover. So I need to get the car put back together, but not having the interior paint finished is really preventing me from doing that. So you're probably thinking, why didn't you paint the interior before you did the exterior? And I considered that, although it's really comes down to some of the cost. You know, I was renting the paint booth by the day and to do extra taping under the car and inside the car would have cost more money. And I thought I could do it after the car is painted because before I cut and buff the car, you know, if I do get a little bit of overspray on the exterior, which I don't think I will, but if it does happen, I have some paint material here that it's gonna get sanded anyways. And so I can polish that overspray out if it does happen. I've been keeping very close tabs on the cost of the rebuild of this car. And my channel and my project is very different than most of what you see in the YouTube or in the real world. I am keeping this car as low as possible. I mean, you might wonder why am I 
trying to save money on fittings? Why am I using all these used parts? Why am I building everything myself? And that's just a personal challenge for, for me. If you've watched this channel for a while, you'll see that I rarely buy big ticket items. I include the cost of every episode. I have yet to break in the three figure mark. Everything is super low cost. You know, I have very ambitious goals for this car and that is driving for under $10,000, including the cost of the car. That is extremely ambitious. I've been really tightening the screws lately. I don't think I'm gonna make it. Uh, I haven't tallied up all the costs associated with the paint, but clearly that was the big one. I need to add those numbers up. I'll do a separate episode on that, but my hunch is I'm over and I'm really trying to you know, save as much as possible. But that doesn't mean I'm sacrificing the build quality, doesn't mean I'm sacrificing safety. And Okay guys, that's one less hole I have to worry about. This patch went okay. I could have spent more time shaping it in a compound curve, but I ended up just rolling it this way and it is good enough for a gas tank. I mean, I think the welds are good enough to where it's not gonna leak, but it is a little bit sort of flat right here. I'll probably uh, put a little filler on it when I paint this because I want to just keep it satin black. So that's done. And I also cut a hole in my parts bowl so that this filler neck can go through it. This bowl is really thin. It's actually stainless steel and I think this tube is stainless steel too. So this is going to be a bit of a challenge to weld it on. This is to catch any fuel that might spill during fueling or even uh, during cornering if someone was to leak through the cap. This is a little segment of the piece I cut off and I'm just checking the gauge thickness on this. It's really thin. Yep, 24 gauge. This is extremely thin. It'll be challenging to weld, but gotta try, right? Okay, as I expected, welding, 24 gauge onto a uh, thicker wall tube. This is, I think, 16 gauge. Uh, 24 to 16 on a fillet weld around a circle is extremely difficult. I've gotten most of the way around, but not all the way around. This should be okay uh, for what its intended purpose is. If this leaks a little bit, so be it. That's probably the best one. This is probably the worst one, just having a difficult time getting started. Also, this um, bowl was not exactly flat. It had a little embossment in it, and so there's actually a little bit of a concave feature in there too, which is hard to fill up with filler without eating away the bowl. Also, you can see the reaction on the back of the stainless steel. It's a little bit of, they call sugaring. This is because the back is not purged with argon. This is just what you get. So this will have to be ground down, smoothed out a little bit. Here are a few parts I picked up over the weekend at a swap meet. I think these are reproduction, but mine had some heavy pitting on the inside here. So these were a good buy at I think 15 for the pair. 
Uh, this I probably am not going to use on my car, 911S. I'll either keep it for a souvenir or I'll move this on. I know I can make money on this. These, I, I think I paid five for this. It's probably worth 30. This is for the 356. This is an ID plate. Uh, I have the original, but it may not be salvageable. So I, I picked this up. This was not new. It's new, but I bought it used. Uh, also five bucks. This turn signal switch, I, I, I recognized it. I got it for my 911, but I, I, have, I have a feeling this is for a 356. Not so sure I can make it work for my hot rod, but I knew I recognized it. I just didn't realize it was for a 356. These uh, bullets kind of give it away. It's earlier than my car. But I picked that up for, I think, 65 or maybe 75. I can't remember. Uh, but I need a turn signal switch. This I needed for my car. This is an original part. It's damaged, has a hole right here. I'm not sure why that's the case, but this was cheap, 10 bucks. I know it's worth that. And then this was also uh, available for 10 bucks. These are reproductions, but they have all the sockets and I don't mind that they're reproductions. They've been ransacked. Some of the parts have been taken for another, you know, another build. But for 10 bucks, this is definitely gonna suit me just fine. I will take the best for my car that I need, whatever fits my car, whatever works in my car, and I'll move the rest on. So overall, I will record these numbers as what the lowest cost was that I actually put on my car. But in reality, I'm gonna be selling probably a third of this stuff to move it on to someone else who is willing to pay for it at the regular price. I bought this underpriced. Oh, I forgot there's one more item. This is the vent for the cow. And this one's original. It's in really good shape. All of these fins are in really nice shape. It needs to be obviously cleaned up and repainted, but this guy wouldn't budge. This is well worth 20 bucks for original part. So I cut this, this is cut oversized to overhang about an eighth of an inch. These are handmade parts, so it's unlikely they're gonna be exactly right on. I'm going to be finishing this as best I can with a file and whatnot, but this is the cover plate, needs the holes drilled to interface with these holes. And then this is intended to go directly on top. Now I'm just measuring the height of the filler neck there is some curvature to the hood, but it looks like this was about eight and a half. I think if I did seven and a half or even seven, that's plenty high enough to keep the fuel inside. I think I'll go seven and a half to allow for some room for the uh, fuel cap. There is an orientation here to this filler neck. This hole here is offset. So I probably just want to rotate it like this. I think that's so the, the nozzle can go in like this and lean back just a little bit. These holes are drilled undersize because I'm match drilling them now together. So I didn't CNC this upper part and these parts were made separately based on the pepper templates. But I have these uh, transfer punches holding the hole positions and an extra drill bit. It's holding the two holes that line up and then I'm just gonna go through and make sure the other two are matched to size. Okay, so now the holes are lined up in approximately the right size. I've decided 
that I'm gonna tap this side so they're threaded going in, and then the fuel pump studs are gonna be sticking out. So that means it's easier to align with the fuel pump bracket and then put the screws in from the top. I left this hole here small. Uh, that's a three quarter inch hole. It's roughly like maybe an eighth inch smaller than the filler hole. But the idea here is that this will serve as a baffle for fuel sloshing out. And I believe this hole is big enough for the fuel to get in as it's filling. If I need to make that hole bigger, I can drill it bigger in the future. But for right now, I'm gonna weld it on like this. Got some real heavy tacks here on some of the corners or around the edges there. So this needs to be fully welded, but I'm not uh, gonna finish it right now. I'm in the mood to do something else. Awesome. All right, guys, this is an experimental technique. This is not the recommended way to do this. I'm welding the uh, tube sleeve onto the end of the flared tube. That is because I don't want any fittings or anything to come loose inside the tank. So I'm trying to weld it all. Now, probably this should be brazed or, you know, use the, the correct fittings. There's like bulkhead fittings and stuff, but I didn't want to take any of those chances of leaking. So I'm doing this experimental technique. I don't recommend it. Uh, this is pretty difficult to weld. You know, I'm, you can see I weld it on the very edge of this tube sleeve. So this is something that uh, I'm experimenting with. Hope it works. Let me show you what goes on the end of this. Okay, so this fitting is, is a designed weld-in bung AN fitting. It's going to go in the back of the tank. And then on the inside of the tank, these two are going to get welded together. And the junction here is... In the mass is increased due to this tube sleeve. So any of the stresses on the tube are fortified by this tube sleeve. Uh, all the heat is on this portion of the tube sleeve. So the tube itself should not be affected by the heat. And I'm going to weld this together and then of course pressure test it. But I think this, at least for me, is the most affordable, most trouble-free way to do it. There's the AN fitting coming out the back goes through the back side of the tank. That's the factory location. And this is a welded joint. Um, although the bung is not fully welded to the tank, the tube is welded to the bung and it's going you know, down. In this case, uh, it's upside down, so it's going up. And then here is where it terminates at that oval. So you can see this dash six AN fitting right there. That is available to connect the fuel pump to. So the fuel pump 
is going to take fuel from the box that I created a couple weeks ago. It's going to push it through the rubber hose up into here and then take it out the back of the tank. So this is what I meant by internal plumbing. Really want to prevent this tube from vibrating and breaking loose. The whole goal here was to have something that's affordable and reliable. And if this is flexing and breaking inside the fuel tank, then that's uh, going to create a leak. So hopefully this doesn't leak. Let me show you from the top side. Okay, this uh, tank has been flipped over and normally the fuel pump, like I showed last week, would be attached to the bracket. Now that bracket happens to be away being uh, zinc plated at the moment, so I have to do without it. But the uh, bracket supports the fuel pump. This goes inside the hole and then it's going to go down inside the box. That is the baffle box with the check valves and then there'll be a uh, right angle fitting on this hose with a swivel AN fitting to it. So it'll drop down in. This will turn to here and then you will tighten this down. Now, I don't actually have that swivel fitting, but it's going to look kind of like this, but have a right angle to it. So this will connect here uh, with a barb on one side. I'll have a fuel injection clamp on that. And then this will be the swivel fitting, which will go right here, tighten that. So with one fitting, you can pull the whole fuel pump out and there's enough room I believe I checked this already. There's enough room here to get a wrench inside here to tighten this as you are attaching the fuel pump. So I can manipulate this multiple different ways to get that tight. That's the connection of the outlet of the fuel pump. Then the cover will go on top of that. Just like so and the connections are all internal to the tank. There will be a electrical outlet coming out of here for the power to the fuel pump. And there'll also be some holes in this bracket to attach the hanger. So the hanger, <coughs> the hanger has studs on it that protrude out and there'll be some holes in this. So the hanger will float around until this comes on top. Those studs will locate the hanger and then there'll be some bolts that go all the way around the perimeter. Okay, like I just mentioned, this is as far as I can go on the fuel tank today. I sent out the internal parts that I made, the baffle box and the fuel hanger, the fuel pump hanger. Those are being zinc plated for extra corrosion protection and they're not back yet. So I, I can't weld the box onto the bottom and completely weld the bottom in yet until those parts come back. That's important. But I also want to pressure test this. I'm going to rig that up probably tonight with a pressure gauge and see if it leaks overnight.